Hello, welcome back to Cardinal Science. This is going to be a two part video series on how to do reacting masses calculations and moles. In this video, we'll be looking at points 1.27, 1.28, and 1.29 of the Edexcel IGCC Chemistry 2017 specification. For 1.27, you need to know that the mole, mole is the unit for the amount of substance. For 1.28, understand how to carry out calculations involving amount of substance, relative atomic mass, AR, and relative formula mass, MR. And 1.29, calculate reacting masses using experimental data and chemical equations. OK, so for 1.27, you need to know that the mole is the unit for the amount of substance. But what is a mole? So one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms or molecules. For example, one mole of hydrogen atoms would be this many atoms. Now, very simply, that huge number there is extremely inconvenient to work with, it makes our calculations long winded and it's not very easy for us to comprehend. So instead of calling it 6.022 times 10 to 23, we just call it one, one mole. But why do we use that number specifically? Why 6.022 times 10 to the power of 23? Well, this number is known as Avogadro's number, and it has quite a special meaning. So if you take one mole of any atom, so any atom in the periodic table, you would find that you have that element's mass in grams, i.e. that element's AR, its relative atomic mass in grams. So for example, if you have one mole of oxygen atoms, that weighs 16 grams, because oxygen's mass is 16. One mole of hydrogen atoms would be one gram, because hydrogen's AR is one. And one mole of chlorine atoms would of course be 35.5 grams, because chlorine's relative atomic mass is 35.5. Now, it may not be clear to you at this point what the purpose of using the mole is, but stick with it, it will make sense as we move forward. But we do need to make sure that we understand how this works. So, what mass would the following have? Pause the video and have a go, and we'll run through that in a couple of seconds. Okay, so hydrogen atoms, two moles of them. If you remember, hydrogen has a mass of one, and one mole would weigh one gram, so two moles would therefore weigh two grams. What about sodium atoms? The mass of sodium is 23, so three moles of sodium would be 3 multiplied by 23, which equals 69. For number three, four moles of aluminium atoms. So you've got four moles multiplied by the AR of aluminium, which is 27, which gives us 108 grams. Okay, one mole of oxygen gas. Now I've added this in here because oxygen gas is O2. So you'd have one mole multiplied by the mass of oxygen gas, which is 16 multiplied by two, which is of course 32. And therefore, a mole of oxygen gas would weigh 32 grams. Likewise, two moles of hydrogen gas, where well, you're going to multiply the number of moles that you've got by the relative molecular mass in this case. And H2 has a relative molecular mass of two, because of course, each hydrogen atom in that molecule has a mass of one. So then you'd have four grams. So for 1.28, we're moving on to reacting masses calculations. Don't worry about that as a title at the moment, it will make itself clear later on. So we have to introduce this equation here. The number of moles equals the mass in grams divided by the AR or the MR. Notice here, I'm not saying AR divided by MR, I'm saying AR or MR. And there's your equation triangle here, for those of you that like to use equation triangles, I imagine you'll use those in maths. So how many moles are there in 25 grams of NaCl? So we're calculating moles, and we therefore need to do the mass divided by, in this case, the relative formula mass, because we have a molecule and not an atom. Mass is 25, and the relative formula mass is going to be 23 for sodium plus 35.5 for chlorine. So we do 25 divided by 58.5, which equals 0.42. Seven. Okay, 
Likewise, now, what would, the, what would the mass be of eight moles of H2O? So we need to calculate the mass. Say so mass equals moles multiplied by the relative formula mass, or in this case, I guess we would call that the MR. I'm just more comfortable using relative formula mass and relative atomic mass as opposed to AR and MR, but they are the same thing. So the number of moles that we have is of course eight and H2O has an MR of 18. We've calculated that previously. Two for the hydrogen, 16 for the oxygen makes 18. So then you do eight times 18 and you get 144. Okay, now here's where you get into the complicated, often seen as challenging reacting masses calculations. Now I'm going to talk you through the steps, but don't be disheartened. We're going to practice each step individually and hopefully you'll get to the point where you can bank these marks in the exam because they're actually really quite easy once you get the hang of them. So here's how it might look. A question might say, Magnesium reacts with oxygen to produce magnesium oxide according to the following equation. So they've given us this equation here. Then they might ask you, what mass of magnesium oxide can be made? So what mass of this can be made if you react 48 grams of magnesium? So you have 48 grams of magnesium with excess oxygen. Now, just to note, excess means you have more than enough to react all of the 48 grams of magnesium. So imagine you had 48 grams of magnesium and then an infinite amount of oxygen. All excess means is that we have more than enough to react with the other um, reactant. Okay, now what you do in this kind of question is you follow these four steps. First step, identify what you know from the question. Now this is a place where people actually trip up quite a lot because they attribute the masses they've been given to the wrong things. So what do we know from the question? We know that we have 48 grams of magnesium. That's what we know. That's the only thing we've been told. Okay, good. Then we calculate the moles of magnesium. So we would therefore do, you, you do our equation, moles equals mass divided by AR. So we would therefore divide our 48 by 24, which is the mass of um, magnesium, which of course gives us two moles of magnesium. Then we would check the ratio for step three. Okay, and again, don't worry, we will be doing practice of all of these. So check the ratio of what you have to what you want to know about. What we want to know about is of course a magnesium oxide. So we're looking at the ratio between magnesium and magnesium oxide, like this. And the way we get that is by looking at the big numbers in front of those species. So in front of magnesium, you have a two, and in front of magnesium oxide, you also have a two, which is of course the same as one to one. This means that the number of moles of magnesium that react are the same number of moles of magnesium oxide that will be produced. This makes things easier. Then, since we now know the moles of magnesium oxide, we can then calculate the mass of magnesium oxide. And mass equals moles multiplied by MR. And we know it's two moles because we have the same number of moles of magnesium. And the MR of magnesium oxide 24 plus 16 which is 40 so we therefore produce 80 grams of magnesium oxide all right i'm going to do this again now but this time i'm taking away the structure and showing you what it would look like if you did it in the exam you also might want to set your answers out like this so step one find out what you have from the question we know we have 48 grams of magnesium that's what the question tells us and it's asking us about magnesium oxide you should do this in your exam. Underline, highlight, whatever you need to do. Just make sure you've extracted the correct information from the question. That's step one done. Now, step two is gonna to be to calculate the moles of whatever we have the mass for, in this case, the magnesium. So we're gonna do moles equals mass divided by AR, and the AR of magnesium is of course 24, we just did this. So we have two moles of magnesium. Step three, look at the ratios. So because we have a big two here and a big two here, the ratio between magnesium and magnesium oxide is two to two. We can therefore say that we also have two moles of magnesium oxide produced. Now we do our final calculation. The mass of MgO therefore equals two 
multiplied by 40, which is the molecular mass of magnesium oxide, which gives us 80 grams. Thank you for watching. Please move over to part two of this video to continue with some more practice questions on calculations involving moles and reacting masses.